It's a good day and um, welcome to another fantastic edition of um, 360 Sport. My name is Mudashi Shitu and um, we'll be having an exciting moment um, in today's program as we look at two important um, sports um, in this part of our world. Some call it um, lesser sport because a lot of people um, don't really devote, doesn't have a large um, followership um, in this part of our world, talking about um, cricket and um, golf. Before we go, um, and in golf, we'll be talking with um, a special guest. But before we go on to golf, we will take you um, to over the weekend where we have um, the commissioning of the, um, the wicket um, stuff, which we know is the cricket um, over at the Tafa Balewa Square in Lagos. And we have um, dignitaries um, across um, the, 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 the lovers of, um, of cricket came to really commission this. And um, why do, is this so important? It's important because this is an historical um, feat for cricketers and also Nigerian Cricket um, Federation. And um, in commissioning this, we have um, the former governor of um, Lagos State, that um, um, Ambode, and also we have um, Chief Mbilo Osage, not even taking away from um, the man who has promised when he became the president of Cricket Federation, talking about um, Uti Okbae. Let's take you straight um, to TBS where the commission took place. Go. Um, ICC heard that we now have this stuff we can fully functional and rest and they're now thinking um, to do a visit so we can have some of the qualifying matches here. So that's what's having to So it's not just about us playing but attracting the best competitions here. Um, in March of this year, end of March, we want to host um, an international women's tournament. We started with a bilateral series for women two years ago or three years ago with Rwanda. But at least as I speak, five other countries want to join us. So it's going to be six. We aim to be eight. So end of March, it's going to be the best and the most, arguably, the best female competition to have been held in Africa when we have that tournament here in March. Now we have like about 20 of them and there's an association that's been formed. So people actually are responsible for that. I mean, this it takes a lot of work here. It's not like before. So there's a lot of training that takes place. They have consultants out of this country that they work on. You need to know when to wet these, these grounds. You need to know, for instance, one of those wickets there is going to be used in three months' time. You babysit that wicket and get ready for three months' time. Depends on how you want to play it. So the whole thing about training the people, maintenance, the right equipment and rest are here. Luckily, we have a lot of support. Some people have donated equipment for, for the pitch here. But it's a whole learning process. But more importantly, what we've always tried to do, coming back to the security of the places, that we would only develop locations where based on partnerships with schools, government, and rest, we have exclusive grounds for cricket. So all these places I've mentioned, they're exclusive for cricket. This is exclusive for cricket. We're going to minimize out, outside tournaments we have. We will entertain it for school sports. For now, it's just going to be cricket. This is our home of cricket. After a hundred years, it's international, and I'm sure many people want to visit here are interested in coming to visit Nigeria to play cricket. It is a historic occasion uh, because uh, in, the whole of, in the whole of Nigeria, uh, with a vast population and landmass, we didn't have one proper cricket pitch because a proper cricket pitch is a tough cricket pitch. What we've been using has been uh, concrete pitches, uh, uh, tarmac pitches, or uh, uh, mats on, 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 on grass. And um, so now we have this type of pitches made of grass. And I understand that as of now, there are okay, about so seven such pitches in the as country. Know, today is historic. So it's uh, historic. In Nigeria. I'm excited about this. Um, you know, this has taken quite some time coming. Uh, we, this is the traditional home of cricket in Nigeria. And um, we expected that we would have had, you know, something like this much earlier. But um, better late than never, we're happy that this um, home of cricket has now come to conform with international standards in terms of the tough weekend. Yes, um, welcome back. Um, away from cricket, we'll be looking at um, um, golf, where we have um, our special guest, who is um, a teenager, but um, he, has, he grew up playing um, golf. And I'm talking about um, Chuku Dubem, who is a student of um, Babcock um, University. Um, you, you, you choose 
golf beyond um, besides every other sport that's trending in this part of our world? What, beyond your dad also, who you said motivated you, tell us how you have a firm belief in this sport. The sport has proven difficult beyond physical attributes. And beyond my dad, the inspiration has come from those that we see on an international level who play in the future. Well. So, first, such as Tiger Woods, who have made it big in the sports and are able to impact the line with others through their prominence in the sports, have made a great in the so. You are right in your classroom as I speak. How do you, how do you combine that? education and um, your love for golf it's very difficult see, but i try to make the best of myself usually i am in school mondays fridays and by saturday sundays i am pleased to play but still need time to study still need time to do and obviously i still need time to practice golf it's difficult to jump at your university, you probably, or your environment there, you probably not have an enabling um, uh, an environment to make sure you, you practice this, your first um, love. So what, what do you do if you are not doing golf in school, you come home for golf, what do you do or do you try um, getting an environment around you to, to practice golf? Yeah, I try to get an environment around me. There are courses around Babcock University, which I'm able to visit. There's one in Chapamu. So that's about 15 minutes away from my school. So on the weekends, I'm able to go and practice and you know, come back to school before you know, the focus is starts. Uh, okay, now the, the future. Uh, and you also have your brother that um, is, he's supposed also to be part of this interview. Who do you think have greater love um, for, for this sport, you or your brother, or you have the same level of interest in this sport? Well, I believe to an extent you have the same level of interest, but due to the fact that uh, I'm being out of school for a bit, I've been able to devote more time to it than he has. So it's, a difficult, um, it's difficult to say who has more interest for as for who puts in more energy currently, that would be me. Okay, interesting. Now, the future, the future. I asked you, um, I, you said um, you don't know whether you end up being a golfer, but you are taking every step as it come. Now, you see yourself um, becoming a golfer or just a part-time golfer because you spent so much of your youth in this sport. It seems a bit odd if you decide to put it aside as an adult. Well, yes, putting it aside is not something that I would like to do. I believe that I can juggle it and put my interest in it as much as I can. And if I eventually end up choosing this as a career path, that would be nice. Although I believe it's good to have the background somewhere else. So juggling school and all this, you know, part of that reason, it's nice to have something to fall back on this, you know, just in case. Okay. The sport you love in this part of our country, that's Nigeria, um, especially in Lagos, where we are, know that there are many interests of golfers. A lot of people go for football, basketball. To you, is that not a bit discouraging where you probably not find a good percentage of your age grade talking golf, they'll also be talking football. They'll be talking football. Do you find it a bit um, discouraging that you don't see anybody analyzing or talking much on golf? I wouldn't say it's discouraging. I would say it, it, it creates an opportunity to bring more people to sport. You know, by that absence being there among the young people about golf, we are able to bring more people to this awareness of the 
about the sports and increase its player rating, speed, and increase the attention that goes to sports. Interesting. Is there anything you want to change? You've seen adults, you've been to several uh, golf course in this country. You've been the one in Lagos and outside Lagos. If there's any, and you've seen adults play. If there's anything you want to change a bit to make the sport more interesting, what would that have been? Well, to make the sport more interesting, I'm not sure what the right answer to that would be. But something I would change due to, or based off my experiences, is the attitude that people have towards it, the attitude that adults have towards it, towards children playing the sport. You know, a lot of adults, I would say, are a bit bitter when they see people, when they see other people in the sport. And a lot of adults are, you know, encouraging of that. So I would like for more people to be encouraging in it. Okay. Now, this will be my final question on today's um, program. In regards to you, I hope one day, we, one day we can get to put you and your brother at the same time talking about this golf. Tiger who seems to be one of the most popular golfers across the globe. Your role model and why you decided to choose that particular role model. Who is your role model in this world of golf? Tiger, definitely. And why Tiger would? Tiger is, well, first of all, a black man. You know, he's someone who is of our skin color, who, is, who has suffered the same thing that he suffered in the world internationally. And he has been able to make a success of himself due to his attitude towards it and his work ethic. And I believe that if we can put it the same amount of efforts into it, the same love into the sports that we all can reach that level. Tiger, as a son playing golf, does that encourage you more that um, in as much as your father play golf and you also play golf, Tiger, who does it, son playing golf, they play golf together, does that also give you an extra encouragement that, yes, golf is the game for you? Yes, of course. I mean, it's good to see someone young in the community the sports and to see someone his age playing as well as he does it. Definitely encouraging. Okay, thank you very much, um, Chiku Dubim Obata, for thank being you. part of um, today's program. And we hope that when we talk to you next time, you probably must have been a professional or you have a club you play for. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, if you're just joining us, this is um, 360 Sport, where we had um, a recap on the program that we started on the show today. We took you straight to um, TBS, that's the Tabaf. Tafa Balewa Square, where we are, the revamped um, cricket, the old um, cricket. For those of you that are students of King's College, um, St. Gregory's, you know where the over cricket is, very close to um, Tafa Balewa Square. That place has really changed, and um, it's interesting to know that cricketers are now everywhere. After that, we just finished speaking to um, Chukutubem Obata, who is an amateur golfer. He's trying to make sure that. Um, his education does not discourage him from um, practicing golf. And that's all we can take on to this segment of um, 360 Sport. We hope that um, next time, same next time next week, we'll definitely be giving you all we need to know in the world of sport. <laughs>